What's going on guys? Tenzin here. This is Backend Developer Guide 2020. I'm gonna try to keep this video shorter than the last one, which was two hours, uh, even though you guys absolutely loved it, right? Uh, I'm gonna try my best, okay? I, I can't promise you, but I'll try my best. So I'm gonna skim over a lot of things here because it's very similar. A lot of the things are very similar, especially the mindset and the philosophical discussions. But what we'll cover are all the technologies you'll need to learn to become a job ready back end developer, step by step walkthrough of the entire journey, best resources, why you must learn front end to become a great, great back end developer, what to expect at each step, pain, frustration, doubts, etc how to guarantee your success and actually make it and how to make an income while you're learning to code. And uh, that last one, we're not gonna touch too much on it because I have a full absolute beast of a video coming up pretty soon, which you guys, which you should be very, very excited about. Okay, you guys should be very excited about that. <laughs> it's, gonna, it's gonna blow your brains away. But let's, let's focus on this video. So why should you follow this guy? Again, started learning to code back in 2010, wrote my first HTML, CSS in fourth grade. I thought I was a hacker, I wasn't. Failed for five plus years, broke through in 2015. So basically I'm making this video so that you don't have to go through what I went through, right? Um, tutor over one-on-one, -on -one over hundreds of students, both locally and remotely, mentor dozens of students, boot campers, masters, yada, 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 right? Cool, whatever. All right, why should you become a back-end developer? It pays well, okay? The glass door says something like 80,000. Uh, if you go to some, I don't know, pay scale, it'll say something else. But usually, you know, if you um, go somewhere in the Midwest of United States, you'll, you can expect a starting salary of about 60 to $70,000 or even more. Uh, if you go to the West Coast or the major cities, um, they usually start around 100, 90, like $90,000, 100K, 110K between that range, okay? But it pays well, it doesn't really matter, cost of living, all that stuff. Harder to get into, but gets easier as you learn more because things are more, um, more consistent in the back end. In the front end, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, 100 new tools, so, you know, it's, it's easier to get into, but it's harder to master, okay? Master, there's no such thing as master, but when I say master, I just mean good enough so you can get a job, okay? Front end has a lot of subjective elements, whereas back end is raw data systems, which makes learning easier for long term because you can predict it, right? Because two plus two is always going to be four. There's never like, Two plus two is maybe 4.1 or 4.2. It's always going to be four, right? Unless the law of physics changes one day, something crazy happens. If you consider yourself more of a data person and you don't care about the looks, right? If you don't give a crap about how your site looks and you're not a design person and you absolutely hate design and you just care about raw data, backend is the thing for you, okay? I personally started up started off as a front-end developer and then moved on to back-end and then became a full-stack developer. And I'll have a video on that as well, on why you should not become a full-stack developer. Um, because a lot of people want to be full-stack developer. And, uh, you know, I can sit here and make a video on that and that'll get a lot of views. But at this point, I can confidently 100% say that going, you know, wanting to become a full stack developer is almost like the surest way, like that, that you're not gonna make it. Okay, you're not gonna make it. So I have a video coming on that pretty soon. So stay tuned for that. So 0 0.1, computer science, 50 hours. Everything depends on computer science, okay? If you want to be a good web developer or a back-end developer, 
you must have your foundation straight. If you don't have a good foundation, nothing you learn on top of that is gonna matter because at the end of the day, it's just gonna collapse one day, okay? And you're always gonna be oscillating to the same spot or you're gonna grow very, very slowly. You, you, you'll feel like you're going really fast if you skip the computer science part and all these other things, but in reality, you're, you'll be going slower, okay? Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, go watch my last video. I go in depth talking about a lot of these things. So I'm not avoid talking about that in this video. So CS50 by Harvard, best CS course. Go through the first few modules and that's good enough. Maybe for backend, I would say go a little bit more, but it doesn't really matter. If you go through the first few chapters or first few modules or whatever it is called, um, they cover computer science you know, abstraction, big O notation, efficiency, history of computer science, what computer science is, compiling interpreters, like dynamic versus static languages, algorithms, you know, sorting, searching algorithms, cool stuff, okay, get it. And uh, last video, people were asking like, what link to uh, pick for the CS50 course, CS50's course, it doesn't matter. Go to edX, done, end of story, they have, all the videos there, or just go to CS50's video. Like, I went on Google right away and I found it. Just click on that first one and just do it. Like, why, it's, it's, it's beyond me. Like, just start, guys. Bird's eye view, okay? 50 hours, that's, I think that's enough. So before jumping into backend, uh, get a pretty, get a high level understanding of all the technologies involved in the field. So that's why you're watching this video, right? So watch this kind of video, and if you don't understand something, then Google it up, right? Google, if you have no idea what body parser is, or passport JS is, or you know, middlewares are, then you just look it up, and you're like, oh, okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. You look it up, and you read it, you're not gonna get it, but at least you'll have a very high level, weak understanding, okay, that's enough. But that's important because at least you'll be aware of it and you'll always keep that in, in the back pocket. And when you're learning things, you'll connect the dots a lot easier later on, okay? Understand what computer science is, what software development is, what web development is and the differences. How the web works, HTTP, HTTP server, what is a client, their relationships, all that stuff. And then start with HTML, CSS, JavaScript. A lot of people you know, online will tell you to just go straight with a server-side language like JavaScript or, uh, I mean, Node.js or, it's really a runtime, but <laughs> Python or PHP or whatever it is, right? But I highly recommend that you start with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and just learn the basics. You don't have to go crazy on it, okay? Just learn the basics and build some simple things with it and that's enough so simple layouts with CSS build a few things to-do list rock paper scissors temperature unit converter you name it very simple things okay learn how to fetch data from an API and display the results on your site like learn how to use an API okay talk to an external API right in JavaScript there's a function called fetch just learn how to use that and uh, don't worry too much about the design and uh, all that stuff right now. Just as long as you understand what HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is or are and how they work together and you have built some things, that's enough. And API, that's important, okay? So resources, go through a book for JavaScript. So some of the books are, you don't know JavaScript, eloquent JavaScript, and effective JavaScript applications. If you are a complete beginner, I would recommend you don't know JavaScript or eloquent JavaScript, either or. Um, I think you don't know JavaScript is a little bit more updated, but I but eloquent JavaScript actually has an um, like dynamic, interactive website, and it's pretty cool. Um, I haven't looked at it in a while, but I remember that you know it it had something like that. So. If you go online, you can get the book for free and the website is also interactive. So you can, while you're reading it and going through the book, you can test your knowledge with uh, 
uh, interactive exercises or whatnot. Build at least 10 things with HTML, CSS. Build at least 10 things with JavaScript. And again, simple things. It, it, it doesn't take a lot of time, okay? When I, say, when I say 10 things, it might seem like a lot, but it's really not. Just build a lot of things. Repetition is the key, okay? Repetition. You don't have to finish the book to move on. Just learn enough to be able to build things and keep going through the book slowly. Pick one book and stick with it. Don't try to, you know, flex the number of books you've read. Like, don't, don't do it. Like, pick one and just stick with it. Like, you should be sticking with your first JavaScript book for at least a year. Unless you're going through it like a madman, like, for 16 hours a day. Okay, then, understandable. But if you're not, like, you should be holding on to that book for dear life, like, for at least a year. At least. And don't jump to another book un unless you have gone through it page to page, like, back to back, and you actually understand it. Two, Node.js, right? Express. Express is a framework for Node.js. Node.js is a JavaScript runtime. If you don't know what a runtime is, just Google it or watch my last video. Um, learn how to set up a server, okay? So if you don't know what a server is, again, these things you should check it out and go over it before you even touch Node.js. You should have a clear, high-level understanding of what a client is, what a server is, and how they work together. Express middlewares, body parser, right? So learn about middlewares. So this is the journey that you have to take when you are learning Node.js, okay? Learn how routes work. So, you know, the reason why when you go to a page like facebook.com and it shows all of, all of your stuff is because that's the homepage. Okay, if you go to about, it'll show something else, right? Contact shows something else, but Facebook doesn't have that. But like, in general, if you had to make a site of your own, you would have to do this, right? So when you go to these URL um, routes, what do you display, right? What do you send back? And that uh, you can do it with Node.js and Express. Right, very easily, like it's app.get slash home and then app, like just function and res.send and that's it. Okay, so learn that. Learn CRUD, okay? How do you create, how do you read, how do you update and delete in a database? Okay, and we'll go over database. This, this, this is kind of overlapping right now, but we'll talk about database in a second. So learn how to create APIs and use your front end to connect to it and get data back and forth, right? Send data to the server, get data back from the server, and, you know, learn how to, how, uh, just how that flow works. Uh, build, let's see, for resources, YouTube and blog articles are enough. Documentations are always the best, okay? If you can read documentations, they are always the best. Um, back in the days, documentations used to suck. But these days, because there's so much competition, everybody's working really hard to make sure that, you know, uh, it's easier to learn that specific technology so pe more people adapt it and, uh, or adopt it, right? So that's why documentations are the best now. These days, like, almost every documentation I look at, it's really good, like, almost better than most of the videos and all the other stuff, articles online. All right, once you have learned the basics of this, Node.js, very quickly, you will have to learn about databases. But before jumping right into databases and creating databases, I highly recommend learning about database design. So you don't have to go crazy on it, just learn what this is, like database design is, right? Think of. The reason why you have to learn about database design is because think of it like for if you want to build buildings, right? The construction workers don't just show up one day and start working on it. No, the architect has to like come up with a design for the building. And he has to go through so many, um, he has to consider a lot of variables like earthquake, like wind, how tall it is, and when it falls, how is it gonna fall? Like, all these things, right? That is database design. So you have to, if you 
design your and design and structure your database right, then actually implementing it is ve very easy. Okay, that that becomes a triviality at that point. But design is very important. So learn about database uh, design, and uh, I think it, you know, 50 hours is enough and just jump right into it after that. So most of the battle with working with databases is coming up with a good design for the said databases, okay? Learn MongoDB. So MongoDB is a database. So you might be asking, what, a, what, a, what is a database, Tenzin? Database is basically a program that stores things in your, on, for your website. Okay, the, the reason why you can access your tweets by going to twitter.com Twitter and Twitter saves those things is because Twitter has a database, okay? And uh, it's just storage. At the, end of, at the end of the day, everything is data, everything is a program, right? And it stores your tweets. And it has, you know, unique identification just for you. And that's how it identifies it and then sends it back. So MongoDB is one of the databases and it is what's known as a non-relational databases. Okay, so look up what is a non-relational database. But the reason why I'm just telling you learn MongoDB is so that I don't give you any options. Like I don't wanna give you options. Okay, there are SQL, Postgres, MySQL. <laughs> There's so many things, okay? But I'm just telling you, go with Mongo and call it a day. Like if you understand one, picking up something else you know, whatever it is, it's gonna be very easy. Very easy, okay? 100 hours. Learn how to set up a server. Wait a second, am I repeating things? Yep. Let's see. Create read, um, APIs, YouTube blog. Yeah, I'm just, I think I just copied and pasted it, but learn MongoDB. Like have a database now, right? Um, create a blog. Create anything that Let's see, build a simple blog, build at least three to five projects that has some sort of a form in the front end and sends data to a server in the back end and stores that in a database, MongoDB, and then you know a feature like a button to get data back from the server to the front end, okay, to the client. Okay, server side, client side, front end, back, like back end, front end, right? Learn what those things are. Authentication, authorization. So once you have learned Node.js, Express, you've got the hang of it, you've um, created a blog, and now you understand you know, a lot of it, then you wanna jump into authentication and authorization, right? And this is, so to give you a very quick, high-level overview, authentication is basically a way to check are you really who you say you are, right? And that's how you log into pages, right? When you sign up, you type in your email, password, and when you have to log back, uh, when you have to log in, you have to uh, type that same email and password, right? So that's authentication. Authorization is once you're logged in, then what do you have access to, right? So if you go to Google Drive and you have documents, so you're the admin. But if you share it with somebody else, you can give them different authorizations, right? Can they just view or can they also edit and update, right? If you go to YouTube, they have admin, they have um, manager and then user. So uh, permissions, right? It's all about permissions. Once you're logged in, what are you authorized to use and what, what are you authorized, like what are you not authorized to use? So that's authorization. So learn, learn these things. And um, for Node.js, there's a passport for JavaScript. There's a module uh, that you can just easily, you know, install and use it, Passport.js, and it will make your life, uh, like, very easy, okay? It's, it's very daunting, okay? Uh, I'll say this. When you are trying to learn server-side programming, I remember back then, for me, it was one of the most daunting, scary things ever. Like, I avoid it. It like a plague because I was scared. I was like, I don't know, I, I don't get it. I don't wanna to touch it. I just didn't get it. And the reason why was because I didn't, um, you know, understand computer science, right? I didn't have uh, like even a very vague understanding of what computer science is, like algorithms and all that stuff. Second, 
I didn't have an understanding of what, you know, like how the web works, like HTTP, what is a server, what is a client, what is backend, what is frontend, like all these things I didn't understand. So when it came to actually learning server-side programming, I just avoided it because even when I was touching it, even when I would follow tutorials, I didn't get it. I'm like, uh, I'm just typing it, but I don't know what it exactly does or how things actually work, okay? But once I got through all of it and after like, <laughs> after spending loads and loads of time, then I'm just like, it was silly, it was silly. I should have just jumped right in and, you know, taken it one step at a time and, you know, went through the computer science and all those things, and then I should have learned this thing. But, well, good for you, you don't, you're not gonna make that mistake, right? But what, what I'm trying to say is that you might feel that, right? Or you're probably watching this and you're like, that's exactly how I feel. Right. A lot of people have the same reaction when I tell them and tell them my experiences because we're all the same thing. Okay, we're we're all going through the same thing and we have the same backgrounds, like it's it's the same. It's the same thing. And yeah, I can go off on tangents like crazy, but let's go back to the point. Learn basic email and passport password sign up sign in workflow. And then once you have that working, then learn how to do password reset. Like when you reset a password, so let's say somebody forgets their password, how do they reset their password? So learn how that thing works, right? You gotta work with tokens and all that stuff. So once you have learned that, so uh, to give you a quick, what is this? Oh, Passport. This is Passport.js, um, their website. And uh, the Passport.js has something called strategies, right? And uh, with that, what you can do is you can use these different strategies, which are, if you think about it, these are just micro programs that are written for you, like micro libraries that are written for you so that you don't have to implement, you don't have to, you don't have to write the whole implementation from scratch yourself, okay? So what I recommend is first using Passport.js and then doing it, and then later on what you can do is try to implement it without Passport.js and see how hard it is, okay? I wouldn't recommend trying to do everything from scratch for like authorization and authentication because there's so many ways to go wrong and especially for beginner, the, the, the danger, the, what I'm concerned most about is people giving up, okay? So I would say first make it work with Passport.js and then later on, give it a shot and try to do it from scratch. And it's gonna be hell, right? And you're gonna be like, wow. You're gonna understand a lot in the process and I highly recommend that you do it, but I say you stick with this first. And then if you wanna do that, go ahead, okay? So that's Passport.js. And uh, again, build. If you're not building and you're not solving problems, then you're, you're not learning, okay? You're not learning. Blog. URL shortener, e-commerce website. So these are some of the examples of projects that you can create, but you can literally look up backend developer projects, uh, backend development project ideas for beginners. That's it. And pick one that you like and start building it. URL short, so these are the popular ones, right? Blog, URL shortener, e-commerce website, so payment integration. So I, I recommend you learn how to do like payment integration, right? How do you accept payments? How do you, like for an e-commerce website, you need to charge people, right? So for that, you can use Stripe. Stripe is like the easiest way. It's literally, like I can go to Stripe right now and make, implement that into my website in like 10 minutes. It's that simple, okay? But in the beginning, it's not gonna be that simple, of course, when you're learning it, but I'm just giving you a perspective. Like, it's really simple, but you have to, you have to, you know, stop being scared of it. A lot of the, especially when it comes to server side, I have realized, at least for me and the people that I've dealt with, most of them, they're scared of server side. Okay, because HTML, CSS, JavaScript, it's easier to slide into, and you're like, oh, I see it index HTML, hello H1, I see it. And there's this instant feedback, so uh, it's easier to learn. But for backend stuff, there's never that. 
what actually happens is you'll get a lot of errors in the beginning, right? The, the simplest things won't work. And then that's why it's really hard to get into. But once you get it, you get it. So uh, Yelp, music streaming site, uh, video streaming app, mini Twitter style social media app, um, and create REST APIs. Okay, at this point, you should understand what APIs are. And uh, when you start creating REST APIs, then you'll actually get like, oh my God, I get it. I get what an API is now. And you should be doing this even before um, learning OAuth and authorization, by the way. Authentication and authorization, by the way. Um, yeah, this is a mistake. You should be doing that before and after doing it, you should, be keep, you should keep building REST APIs and then connecting that to your front end and then, you know, doing magic. Build at least two functional apps before moving on. So when, I, when I'm talking about two fully functional, I'm talking about a pretty, you know, a medium-sized project. So build that before moving on, learning more stuff, okay? So once you have done that, I highly recommend you learn a relational database. So there are many approaches you can take, many paths you can take. I would recommend Postgres, okay? There's MySQL, there's um, Postgres, there's SQL, there's too many, too many, five or six. I recommend Postgres. That's it, done. <laughs> don't, don't go on Google and be like, what, what is the best one to learn? What? Don't worry about it, just start, just start. PostgreSQL and uh, learn the differences between relational and non-relational databases. Learn the why, right? Not just what and how. What kind of projects is a relational database suited for? What kind of projects is a non-relational database suited for, right? Um, non-relational databases uh, are usually suited for when you have data that you can't predict or uh, fluid data, right? For example, for Netflix, you, uh, they're running Node.js in the back end. At least that's what I heard last time, right? And last time I checked was like years ago. So maybe they're using something else now. But I know that Netflix uses Node.js, um, I'm sorry, not Node.js, MongoDB in the back end. Um, always seek to understand why, before, what, and how. Build, keep building, guys. If you're not building, just keep building. And if you've built at least 10 to 20 projects, at least, that's the keyword, at least, okay? And if you have done all the things the right way so far, you will know, okay? You'll, you'll get to a point where you'll feel pretty confident with almost everything, okay? Your design might suck, you, your CSS might not be the best, but it doesn't really matter because as long as you can create simple designs, even though your design sucks, as long as you can create a functional layout with CSS and HTML and do JavaScript in the front end, and then you have a complete, you know, stack in the back end that you're comfortable with, you'll get to a point where you're like, I can almost build anything. You'll, it's, it's hard to put into words, right? It's ineffable, like, but, but you'll get it, okay, when you're there. And usually it takes about at least 10 to 20 projects. I would say like 30 projects, you'll, you're set. And, uh, once you've done that, you're job ready. That's it, job ready. You're job ready. You might say, what, what about testing, Tenzin? What about this, what about that? What about GraphQL, what about Gatsby? What about Jamstack? Yes, those things are, you know, you can definitely learn and more is always better, you know, knowledgeable, great. But what I'm talking about are the absolute necessities to become a job ready front end developer at least a beginner job, okay, junior developer job. But you're ready for a job, okay? At this point, it's just about you selling yourself. And if you think you're not ready, you're not ready. But if you think you're ready, you're ready at this point, right? Before this point, if you think you're not ready, you're probably right. So here's the thing, right? A lot of people ask me, Tenzin, I, I don't get it, I can't get a job. If you can't get a job, what do you mean you can't get a job, dude? Like, everybody's hiring, right? 
as long as you have the skills, you should be getting a job. Now, everybody, almost everybody that has, that have come to me and told me that they, they can't get a job, I always ask them, how many jobs have they applied to in the last week or last month? And they'll tell me, two. How are you gonna get a job? Like, you're not gonna get a job. You don't deserve a job, okay? Unless you're like, I don't know, like 50 year old veteran with loads of experience and you know, accolades and reputation and brand online, sure. But if you don't have that, like you're not gonna get a job with two applications a month. I know people like, who's applied like 300 to 300, 400 places and then finally getting a job after like three months. So don't come here and tell me you can't get a job. Like either you're unskilled, which makes sense if you can't get a job, but if you have arrived at this stage, you have 10 to 20 projects under your belt, right? And you're comfortable. Like, again, if you're watching this, you will, you will understand, you will, you will feel it. You will feel comfortable with where you're at and you'll know what I'm talking about. It's something that you just, you, you, I can tell you all day, but it's still not gonna make sense to you unless you're there. Once you're there, you'll watch this and you'll be like, I get it, I, I'm there, right there, I'm right there. Okay, so it's one of those things. So if you're here, Apply to 10 jobs every day, okay? Be ready to move, automate, develop a system, templates. And as you do more, you'll get more efficient, okay? Start applying, like start applying. 10, like let's do the math, right? Let's do the math. Brute force math, right? This is the brute, brute force method. 10 job applications, that 300 job applications in a month, 1,800 in six months. Let's say only 5% converts to interviews. That is 90 interviews. And if you tell me that you can't get a job after attending 90 interviews, then you're just, <laughs> you're, you're, you're done. Nobody can help you at that point. Like something's seriously wrong. Like something's messed up. It's not about programming. It's not about, something's wrong. Okay, so you, you will land a job. There's no way you can't land a job if you have all the skill set so far. You will land a job. Just apply, 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 apply. And a lot of the job descriptions, you know, they'll say, oh, you need three years of this, five years of this, don't listen to it. It doesn't mean anything. Like what does five years of experience really mean? Somebody could be doing it five years, you know, React one, for one hour every day for five years, or somebody else can be doing React 10 hours a day for five years. It's, it's not the same. It's like 10X difference, right? They're not the same at all. So don't listen to five years, three years experience, just apply, 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 put your best foot forward, highlight your strengths and just attend interviews and show them that even though you might not know everything, you are willing to do whatever it takes to learn it. And that willingness to learn is what is like, for me, right, I, I own a business and when I'm trying to hire people, I don't hire people for what they know already. I don't, I don't care about that at all, a lot of the times. What I care about is how willing or how fast can this person learn? Or is this person open-minded, right? That's it. Is he teachable? Is she teachable? And if they are coachable, that's all that matters to me. And that is the most important thing, right? Integrity and uh, like willingness to learn and the speed at which they learn. Like these things are way, way, way more important. And then, you know, like reliability, like that's way more important than anything else. Because I know that uh, for an employee, you know, uh, to get trained for a job, it takes, no matter what kind of employee they are, uh, it takes about three to six months. And uh, that's the kind of, you know, time and energy and investment that you have to make with an employee. Anyways, and I know that within three to six months, they'll be ready for any kind of job. Like you, I'll train them on the job. So to me, from a business owner's perspective, I'm telling you right now that like, it, it's not about the skill set. 
The hard skill set is important, but it's not as important, nowhere near as important as you think. Okay, so that's why I'm telling you right now, you will land a job if you, if you do these things. Like if you don't, again, come back to me, come to me. Like if you can't land a job, you, you, like, I'm, this video is recorded, it's on YouTube. After six months, you've had 100, 1,800 applications and 90 interviews, and you haven't landed a job, I'll give you a job, I'll give you a job. But you gotta show me, like either on indeed.com, whatever, from dates, timestamps, like here, 1,800. 90 interviews, and boom. And uh, chances are, you'll get a job, like 1,000%. And uh, how to interview, right? So many people ask me, Tenzin, how do you interview? Like, how do you sell yourself? Like, so first thing is, don't learn how to interview. There's no such thing. Like, learn how to communicate. Learn how to shut up. Because it's about selling. Right? It's about selling yourself. S again, highlighting your strengths rather than your weaknesses. Right? You can be honest about your weaknesses, but you want to make sure to tell them that, hey, I don't know everything, but hey, I'm willing to learn. And guess what? I'm very fast at learning because my track record, because I went to a boot camp and I did this and I did this. And within eight months, I've learned all these things. Even though it was hard, I was spending 12 hours every day studying it. And I'm really passionate about it. And you want to bombard them with all the good stuff that you're doing, right? Don't even, like you can talk about the bad stuff for like a split second, but make sure you just go ham with the, uh, you know, your strengths. So it's about, it's about selling yourself and then shutting up because a lot of selling is actually listening and asking questions. So you want to be asking the interviewer questions and holding frame. Like th these things are like, you know, if you read psychology, um, if you read books, if you read, if you learn how to communicate, socialize, you'll do much better on interviews than actually going through an interview book. Like learn the principles of selling. A job is just a client with a lot of, you know, its own pros and cons. Um, change how you view the world. Okay, that's usually that's a problem. It's not, it's not like how to interview. You just gotta learn. Just gotta learn how to communicate, learn how to like shut up, like read books, principles of selling. Communication is key, listening. And uh, while you're applying to these jobs, don't stop learning. Like you're still learning, but you're applying to these jobs every day. And it doesn't take, like to ap applying to 10 jobs a day, it doesn't take a lot of time, especially if, if you've been doing it for let's say 14 days, 21 days straight. At that point, you'll be so efficient because you're a programmer, right? Because you're, gonna, you're not gonna repeat things, right? You're not gonna, you have written functions, you have, you're, you're, you're at this point now, and uh, programming actually helps you learn how to think. And uh, by default, if you're at this point, this stage, you will automatically think of how, to, how you can automate things, how you can put it into functions, right? Functions. But you'll develop systems and automate it and build templates, right? The template is just like a function. And then it's just a copy paste at that point. Copy, paste, copy, paste, and then personal stuff, boom, everything else is static, and then you have the dynamic stuff, which you, you'll change a little bit, You're like, hey, you know, uh, I just saw your job posting here, it's amazing, I'm this, I'm that, great. I'm qualified, whatever, right? It, it will literally, you can literally do it within like 20 minutes. 10 job applications within 20 minutes, even faster. Command, it's a command A, command C, command V. That's it, command A, command C, one minute, three minute edit, command, like paste, right? Like, done, it's send it. <laughs> um, and once you're, as you're doing this, you have time to learn. So keep learning and keep building. And again, you know, Albert Einstein, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. So 
one of the things you know that I used to do and I see a lot of people do is they get comfortable and I've seen this you know I, I've realized this across so many things in my own life with fitness with um, business with everything with every single thing and especially with programming this is a reason why I quit many times in programming as well because I got comfortable I thought I knew stuff but I didn't right um, so know that knowledge compounds if you're at this stage don't stop learning don't slow down now now you did like you didn't come this far just to come this far now of all times like this is not the time to stop or slow down this is where you double down like this is where you just don't eat drink like you you eat sleep and like code okay sleep well eat well go to hit the gym but then code like just go all out all out okay so at this point html css js no js mongo postgres um you know you've built projects dozen apps can't be lazy don't get comfortable be uncomfortable when you start feeling uncomfortable or comfortable okay be uncomfortable when you start feeling comfortable and uh, this is the stage where you um when you s start to solidify your knowledge okay so first the solidification phase and then after that you explore more and learn keep learning more okay so before you learn more always try to solidify what you have already learned because if you if what you have learned already uh if that knowledge that you have is weak if that knowledge is weak then whatever you learn on top of it it doesn't matter it just doesn't matter okay you want to learn less is more okay you less is more so build more projects review what you have learned and try to solidify that knowledge with books and projects and now shoot for bigger projects okay uh, one giant project is better than like five little projects but in the beginning it's necessary it is necessary for you to do little micro projects because if you try to do a big project from the get-go it's gonna overwhelm you and you're gonna give up and even if you get it done you're not gonna get it okay false sense of accomplishment you're gonna copy it from somewhere you're gonna just Get it done for the sake of getting it done and you'll never look at it you won't refactor it you won't try to do it again you will just be like oh, i'm done right and that'll actually eat away at your confidence too because you can't even when you show it off to your employee you know future prospects like clients or employers you you won't you won't feel confident and over time that pressure is just corrupts you and it's not fun okay I've been through it all and that's why I'm telling you this this is not something that I just thought about and made it up okay I'm all of these things I'm telling you is because I've been through it and I'm like <laughs> a lot of misery you know after going through a lot of misery then I'm like okay all right I give up I'm gonna do it right and uh, you know and I've taught other people as well so I've seen this many times so less is more foundation is very important and once you have solidified things, you know, once you know what you know, like actually understand it, not just know it, like understand it and you can do it, then learn testing, okay? And again, testing is one of those things that you're, you're gonna be scared of. Like you're gonna be petrified of testing. I used to be petrified of testing. I'm like, testing, oh no, no, I'm not gonna touch it. Like, it, it didn't make sense, right? It, like right now it doesn't make sense in my head like why I was petrified but I was literally I kid you not I was petrified of touching testing in reality it's just like freaking one line like assert like test dot assert equals blah 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 done done that's all testing is yeah you can go deeper but like the gist of it it's just that so learn how to test like I'm, I'm lazy. Like for, if it's like my personal project, I don't even write test cases. Yeah, sure, I'm not the best developer, but hey, it's just my personal project. And you know what? I don't. I'm lazy. Okay, <laughs> I don't like doing it. Um, 
it's not that I don't like doing it, it's just that I don't do it because I'm like, eh, I write pretty good code, you know, clean code. But even then, you should be always writing tests if possible, okay? So if you want to be perfect, always be writing test cases, okay? But if I'm like working on a group project or something, I will always write test cases. Like, I will always write tests. So, learn testing. JWT, easy to pick up if you have done basic auth already. Okay, so that's JSON Web Tokens. Learn GraphQL, check it out. It's the next big deal, or the future. And if you feel confident with the fundamentals, explore cool stuff like Gatsby JS, Jamstack, right? So I've been having fun with Gatsby JS for the last six months or so, and it's a lot of fun. And uh, you know, the new website, I'm redoing my website. I've been meaning to do it for a long time. Like my website right now is just a form. It's been a form, like just been a form for a very long time. It's just literally a form. <laughs> but in the future, um, like I, I think in like the next week or two, I'm gonna update it and it's gonna be implemented in Gatsby JS. So we're working with the mockup and the design right now. And once that's done, we'll implement that in Gatsby. So. Yeah, Learn Gatsby is really, the beautiful thing about that is that, you know, it's client side and uh, it's fast, but there's no point of talking about that in this video because you're just not gonna get it. So don't worry about it, okay? These are like, once you have learned all these things, then keep learning it, right? And if you're at this point, like it, it, these things don't even matter because you'll know what to learn and what not to learn. Like, no matter, it doesn't matter what I say here. If you are at this stage, when you get to this stage, you'll know more than I could ever tell you in this video. You'll know exactly what to do and what not to do, for the most part. Again, learn, build, repeat, right? This is the one, two, three combo, right? Jab, jab, JavaScript combo, like that's it. Learn, build, repeat, learn, build, repeat. All right, so just like in the last video, I have a conclusion, work, you know, 800 to 1,000 hours is the average. Uh, it took me that long, personally. Uh, actually, I wasted a, way more time than that, but when I actually, you know, got down to it and committed and without quitting, 800 to 1,000 hours is what it took me to, you know, start be, becoming comfortable and landing clients and getting jobs and whatnot, you know, um, and I'll have a video on how I quit my very first job in five days because some of you guys wanted to hear more about that. So I'll make a video on that. Sleep at least seven hours a day. You sleep more, you'll, you'll learn code faster. Don't rush, life is long, have fun while doing it, okay? Um, I used to, at, you know, there were some times when I was learning coding, I felt miserable, okay? I felt completely miserable. And we can go into the story, but like, there's, at this point, I feel like I'm just repeating a lot of things, right? So, but if Viktor Frankl can find peace, happiness, you know, happiness in the camps, concentration camps, like you can, we can definitely do it while learning code, right? It's just world view, like we have to change the lens, like our lens from which we view the world has to change. And then we'll be like, wow, coding is so much fun instead of, Coding is so hard, it's so miserable, right? Um, every single one of you can do better than me. Question is, are you gonna put in the work? Don't just do it for the money, you won't last, okay? Again, please don't do it for the, just for the money. You will not last, I, I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now, please. If you wanna make money, like, just find something that you like to do. Because here's the thing, right? And this is something that I'm still internalizing today. Right, I've uh, heard this from my mentors for a long time. Um, you know, like for the past multiple years, like three, four, five years now at this point. But they always talk about passion, right? Even and you know, passion is important. But at the same time, I'm like, yo, you, you just got to do it. Sometimes you just got to first do it, and then you get passionate once you get kind of good at it. But passion is also very important, right? And passion is such a loaded word at this point. You it could mean so many different things, but really, it's Liking what you do, that's all it is, right? Liking what you do. Um, a lot of us here don't have to really work to go eat ice cream, right? We'll just eat it. We'll just be like, yeah, 
if we have to binge watch a show, we'll just do it. It's like the most fun thing. Like we'll just do it. Okay. If we have to go drink, go to a vacation, we'll just do it right off the bat. If we had uh, all the variables in place, we'll just do it right away. So you want your work to be like that. And the cool part, like the beautiful part about that is when you love what you do, you're going to be doing it 24 seven. And when you do it 24 seven, nobody can compete with you. And that's something that I'm still internalizing it. Okay. It still hasn't hit my dumb, stupid brain yet, but I'm slowly chipping away at it and getting a higher level of understanding every day, just slowly. And one day, you know, compound effect, baby, compound effect. But I'm just telling you right now that don't do it for money. Like this, I cannot, you know, I know money is important, but like, please, like find another purpose. If you're gonna do coding and it's for money, like try to find a, a greater purpose. Sounds cliche, I know, but you gotta do it. <laughs> Disable all notifications on your phone except for phone calls, hit the gym, eat cleaner, sleep, sacrifice, going out, yeah, blah, blah, blah. All right, guys, this is Backend Developer Guy 2020. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's definitely shorter than the last one. Next video I'm gonna be doing is the freelancing guide. And uh, I will say this, it is going to be the best, the best value packed video on how to start a business, like a freelancing business as a developer or as, a, as a anything. You can apply the principles for pretty much any kind of business. And I might just go crazy and it's, it might just be like five, six hours, but I'm gonna lay it all out, like all out. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching and um, until next time, take care and peace.